In a short span of time, Takashi69 overtook Trippy Red in popularity, then went on to continuously troll him and got one of his entourage to even sucker punch him in the face. He then rubbed salt in the wounds by posting close-up videos of himself with Trippy Red's ex at the time. Everything would indicate that 6ix9ine had won the beef, but as we'll get into, Trippy Red would eventually take the victory in the end. In the spring of 2017, Takashi 6ix9ine was desperately trying to break out in the music scene. Having finished touring Eastern Europe and countries like Slovakia and the Czech Republic, he took the last of his money to fly to LA. He and his team didn't have enough cash for a return flight, and Takashi told everyone that if things didn't work out, they could just sleep on the beach. During that trip, Takashi 6ix9ine recorded a video with another up-and-coming SoundCloud rapper named Trippy Red. They shot the video for the song Poles 1469, the 14 stood for the 1400, which was associated with Trippy Red, and 6ix9ine stood for Takashi. They also collaborated on the song Uwi. During this time, Trippy and Takashi were starting to become good friends, and in the music industry, or the SoundCloud industry, both of them were on relatively equal footing. The only thing that Trippy Red had over Takashi was that he was signed by Elliot Grange, who was the CEO of Strange Music at that time, which is now more known as 10K. Elliot, who's the son of Lucian Grange, the owner of Universal. Through his collab with Trippy, Takashi caught the eye of Elliot Grange and through a recommendation by Trippy Red. In August 2017, they went out to an elaborate dinner and they got him signed. Takashi had also joined the Nine Trey Gangsta Bloods during this time, which according to the New York Times gave him, quote, a stamp of street authenticity that would guarantee musical stardom. All of the wheels were in motion for Takashi to become the next biggest rapper. Until one day, one of Takashi's songwriters revealed a pretty dark and disturbing secret. Takashi's friend and writer, Zilakami, aired a 2015 photo showing Takashi, who was then 18, with a 13-year-old girl. This was something that shocked and disturbed a lot of people in the industry, more notably Trippy Red. Trippy released a video on Instagram where he said, I'm sorry, bro, Zay. 1400 don't promote PDFs. If we gave dudes clout, we gave dudes clout. It was an accident. But keep in mind, this wasn't until after the backlash, and Trippy claimed that he already knew about this. The details of exactly what happened hadn't fully come out to light, and Takashi signed a record deal with Elliot Grange. However, there's an important part of Takashi's deal that would become more important later on. Grange was eager to find new artists, so much so that he would provide a finder's fee to anyone who helped him discover the artists he signed. As part of this deal, a percentage of Takashi's earnings went to Trippy. As Trippy explained, I'm signed to Elliot Grange. If you don't know who that is, that's the dude that owns Universal Sun, okay? I'm signed to him and his label is Strange Music. You are not signed to Strange Music. In fact, you got a deal for 30 bands and I made 5K off that because I got you your deal. In another video, Trippy Red said something that would come back to haunt him. He was riding high at the time and said, I have more followers than you. I have more fans than you. I have more clout than you. I have videos with more views than yours. I have more money than you. I have way more than you, bro. And you won't even get as far as I'm going to get. Everything Trippy Red said in that video was true, but within a matter of days, the tables were turned. During this short-lived friendship, Trippy shared some beats he had with Takashi. Trippy Red had a beat sent to him by the producer Pierre Bourne, who he was close with, which he no longer wanted to use, so he sent it on to Takashi. On November 10th, 2017, Takashi released the song Gummo, a song which would peak at number 12 on the Hot 100. This song would jump shoot Takashi into the limelight, and he would soon have more followers, fans, and clout than Trippy. The song took shots at KB, who was one of Trippy Red's bodyguards. Around this time, Trippy's manager tried to become a peaceful mediator between the two. Trippy was shooting a music video in New York, and his manager invited Takashi to come over and hash things out. The olive branch was extended, but 6ix9ine never appeared to accept it. The reality is that 6ix9ine was outside the building. He and his crew waited for Trippy to leave the video shoot. Eventually, Trippy and his entourage were spotted outside getting into a sprinter van. Takashi and his crew followed the van for about an hour, sometimes even cutting lanes to keep up. The sprinter van stopped at the Gansevoort Hotel where Trippy was staying. Inside the lobby of this hotel, Trippy Red was ambushed by two of 6ix9ine's entourage and punched in the face. What was now a war of words on Instagram was getting pretty violent. Trippy went on to Instagram to explain what had happened. He said that Takashi is no longer allowed to come to a LA, 
and threatened that if he comes to LA, things were going to kick off. In the video, Trippy said, Bro had dudes waiting for me at my hotel, some nine tray dudes. And because Trippy mentioned on social media that Takashi's entourage were nine tray bloods, this prompted Takashi to say something which has not aged very well. Takashi accused Trippy of snitching. Stop snitching, homie. Why you snitching, homie? In the coming months, we would see a constant back and forth between Trippy and Takashi. Takashi's career had well and truly overtaken Trippy by this time by multiple levels, which naturally prompted Takashi to troll him pretty heavily. In December, a Jezebel article went into the gritty aspects of Takashi's misconduct in 2015. The exact charge that Takashi pled guilty to was the use of a child in a sexual performance. And Takashi maintains that he didn't know that she was underage, nor did he engage in actual activity with her, just something that was still quite disturbing to watch. This had the potential to destroy his career, but instead, his subsequent singles Kuda and Kiki only advanced his career even further. Takashi was living proof that any publicity was good publicity. In 2018, he posted a video about how proud he was that he was bringing the spotlight back to his home state and city of New York. This prompted Trippy to jump into the comment section and say, he should pay homage because he wouldn't be nothing without me. I set the beef stuff aside, but I gave dude a name and he should be happy and showing me mad love because without Trippy Red, he wouldn't have no billboard hits or none that BS. Takashi hit back with, don't let nobody tell you they made you. You don't got the power to make somebody if you can't make yourself. The back and forths continued. However, fans of both the artists wanted them to talk to each other and flesh things out. They missed the music that they made. In November of 2017, Trippy's manager failed to get them to speak to one another, but six months later, he got what he wished for. Takashi decided to call Trippy on IG Live. This was one of the few times in Takashi's life where he was the voice of reason. He spends the entire chat trying to cool things down and establish what happened at the hotel that night. Trippy is understandably quite frustrated. He felt embarrassed and they would continue talking over one another. Then there's a rather ill-advised argument over which one of them is the truest member of the Bloods. Ultimately, the feud between these two was clearly not going away anytime soon. And adding an extra dimension to the beef was Takashi's other feud with another rapper named Tato. Takashi was talking on IG with a woman named Cuban Doll, who was involved with Tato at the time. Allegedly, Tato took exception to Cuban Doll, speaking to Takashi, and she appeared on Instagram with bruises on her face. Tato also threatened Takashi with the words, quote, I kill people. A few days later, Trippy released a 6ix9ine diss track named, which featured Chief Keef and Tato, and it was no coincidence that the title was, I kill people. In the aftermath, Takashi had his first and perhaps only chance to take the moral high ground. Trippy had distanced himself from Takashi for many different reasons, but he seems to have no issue working with someone accused of DV. Takashi said, like I understand being washed up. Matter of fact, I don't understand it because I was never washed up. But capitalizing off of DV? That stuff is effing trash. Y'all trying to pick back your career and one is trying to make a career. This stuff makes no effing sense. Y'all capitalizing off a of girl getting beat. What type of stuff y'all on? And soon afterward, a lady would come between the two. In July, Trippy appeared on the No Jumper podcast with his girlfriend at the time, Alex. Trippy even posted videos of himself and his girlfriend making fun of Takashi. But this relationship didn't last very long, and Trippy went on Instagram to air his grievances. He said, As soon as we broke up, I heard that she was going to follow 6 9 And clearly, there was some animosity between the two, as Alex decided to hit back at him in the most hurtful way possible. Trippy posted a picture of himself with Alex singing together, and their song of choice was F Love, a song about heartbreak by XXXTentacion and Trippy Red. Soon afterward, nothing was left to the imagination. Takashi posted on his IG a video of himself in bed looking at a video on his phone where everyone is chanting F69. He shows it to the woman beside him, and lo and behold, Alex is right beside him. This video was obviously lapped up by Takashi fans, and it seemed like he had gotten another W over Trippy in the most humiliating way possible. But 6 ix victory wouldn't last for long. He was arrested by the feds just days later, and potentially facing nearly the rest of his life behind bars. For his involvement in the Nine Trey Bloods gang, Takashi was possibly facing a total of 47 years in prison, 
and was presented with two options. He could take the hit and face nearly five decades behind bars going to trial, or he could completely tarnish his reputation in hip-hop forever and cooperate with the federal government. He chose the latter option. Takashi would testify against nine train members Nuke, Harv, and he said that rappers Cardi B, Casanova, Jim Jones, and Chief Keef were all affiliated with gangs. On his Instagram talk with Trippy last year, he claimed that Trippy was not a real blood. But in a court of law, and with his life on the line, he said that Trippy was a member during the trial. The snitching outraged everyone and anyone in hip-hop. Meek Mill, Snoop Dogg, and 50 Cent were just some of the names disgusted by his cooperation. The street cred he cultivated throughout his career had now vanished into thin air. During this time, the hip-hop world would be led to question just how real the beef between Trippy and Takashi was. In December 2019, the lawyer of Anthony Harv Ellison claimed that the entire Takashi and Trippy beef was staged. Alex would shed some more light on this in 2020 when she claimed that she never slept with Takashi and she was simply trolling for a video. It was a skit, and her brother recorded it. While there could have been a publicity stunt element to this, it's more important the optics. If people thought that, you know, you slept with 6 9 you might as well have done it. It does the same damage to Trippy Red. There are some incidents that point towards it not being fake, though. Takashi did make fun of Trippy's dead brother, something which would definitely cross a line if this was staged. Takashi also testified that he ordered his entourage to beat up Trippy at his hotel in New York on that night in 2018. The beef between the two does seem genuine, but there definitely seems to have been some theatrics at play too, perhaps definitely in the beginning. But with Takashi becoming a free man once again, the beef was brought back to what hip-hop beef should be all about, the music. In September 2020, Takashi released his album Tattletales, which was expected to pull in 150k in its first week. In reality, it sold 56k total album equivalent units. Meanwhile, in November, Trippy Red's album Pegasus achieved 60k in its first week. For the first time since 2017, both artists were once again back on a level playing field. Since then, Trippy has released even more successful albums and singles, but we're still waiting for another project by Takashi. Since getting out of jail, Takashi has continued to grab attention through social media and memes, but it's a lot more desperate now. There's no music to go along with it. But there's only so far you can get with all of that. In contrast, Trippy Red seemed to want to become a better musician, artist, and just fall back from a lot of the antics. His sound has continued to evolve, and he's moved on from his emo rap. At a certain point in time, he adopted the rage rap sound of Playboy Cardi, Lil Uzi, everyone was doing it at the same time, so I wouldn't say he necessarily took it with from them, but he did take inspiration from Playboy Cardi. As an add-on for his Pegasus album, Trippy Red even made an additional rock record with Travis Barker. There's some interesting data to explain what I mean. If you look at Takashi's monthly listeners and popularity on Spotify, you can see it spike up in 2018 and 2019. However, his popularity has been gradually going downhill since. If you look at Trippy Red, you don't see the same downward trajectory, and he seems to be retaining the same level of listeners and popularity in the past five years. Also, we should keep in mind the element of momentum. 6 9 had some crazy momentum, which was pretty much killed off in the near two years that he had to await trial and then being released. Ultimately, Trippy Red has not been relying on cloud chasing for his success, and at the moment, wants his music to speak for itself, we can definitely say he's far more respected as a music artist, even as a person or figure within hip hop, as opposed to 6 9 now. And it was through playing the long game that Trippy seemed to have won this beef. Many people didn't think that when Trippy Red said, oh, I'm focused on the music, I'm looking to be here for a long time, that he would be here past 2019. But he's proven everyone that said that wrong. Make sure to subscribe for more.